the biggest challenge in the differential diagnosis between migraine and cluster headache is that cluster headache is many times less common so it can always be forgotten about or um, it's more difficult because people don't, aren't doing it all the time. So migraine probably affects uh, close to 20% of the population in the, in the peak years um, when you add it all together. But cluster headache is 0.1%. So any uh, general practitioner, for example, uh, a general neurologist is going to see many, many more migraine patients before they see a cluster patient. So the first challenge is it's rarer, so they have to have it in their minds. Now an upside for cluster headache because it tends to be more common in men uh, than in women, but you won't then be surprised that if you're a female with cluster headache, you're going to struggle for a few more years to get the, di get the diagnosis. Cluster headache attacks come in bouts, so by the time you get to see the doctor, the bout may have stopped. Cluster headache attacks come with features um, like, uh, the cr uh, like cranial, uh, cranial autonomic features like lacrimation or conjunctival injection, the nasal congestion. And if that comes at the particular time of the year with the, when the change of the clocks and seasons are happening, people think about sinus disease. So there's that, that misdiagnosis. The, the big difficulty between the two, they're, they're very typical when you see them. Cluster headache patients will be agitated, restless, want to move about, migraine, uh, a migraine patient will exactly not want to do that. They want to be still and quiescent and not move about. So the, it's e I mean, at one level it's easy because they're very distinct. At another level, cluster headaches rare, so it can be a challenge. What we've presented here is a machine learning approach to try and classify in an unbiased way appearances on and, and function on brain imaging between controls, migraine patients and cluster patients out of a bout. So what, the, what we did was take uh, MRs, T1 images, uh, T2 images for flare, um, arterial spin labelling, diffusivity images and, uh, and resting state bolts, so a range of modalities and then use a mathematical approach called independent components analysis to try and understand if there were changes in each of these um, that mark out those groups. We took those changes and then put them into another approach called um, support vector learning, which is a, a machine language approach. It's the same sort of approach that's used for facial uh, recognition. So it's a teaching approach, in effect. Um, you teach the, um, the machine, which I hate to personalise it that way, but by saying that, by telling the machine that there's, these are the controls, these are the migraine patients, these are the cluster patients, and these are the features that have come out of the independent components analysis. And then the, the machine, the, the, the algorithm tries to um, classify the changes according to the likelihood that they belong to a particular group. So what we found was that if you take controls and all, uh, all headache patients, there's a difference in the way the, the network arising from the thalamus behaves in all the patients with headache, which is when you think about it, return back to the physiology, it's not backbreakingly surprising that we find the thalamus because it's a way station for all sensory information. And there are, for example, in migraine, there's pan sensory dysfunction, if you like, light and sound and smell. So, and then looking at the migraine patients uh, specifically compared to controls, saw a difference in, the, in a network starting in the ponds. Now, it's very promising because that's the, the structure that's identified from other functional imaging uh, methods to be involved in the early phases of migraine, in the prodrome, the premonitory phase, and indeed in the headache phase. When looking at the cluster patients, there is a, a, a network centred on the hypothalamus, uh, which is different in cluster patients compared to migraine patients, and a network in the, uh, in the, in the high, uh, arousing again from the hypothalamus in migraine patients that's different from controls and it puts some focus on the hypothalamus and again it's not entirely surprising because we're seeing that from other functional imaging modalities and indeed it makes sense in terms of the um, premonitory prodromal symptoms in migraine and it makes some sense when you're thinking about the cyclical nature of, of cluster headache. So what we're, what we're doing with these techniques is applying the the very latest in, um, in, in big data approaches, you might say, the machine learning approaches, to try and understand better 
the pathophysiology of migraine and ultimately to be able to try and develop tools that clinicians could use to help uh, them uh, help them clinically if we could if if we if we can get the machine learning approach um, to evolve.